Now I want to tell you this. There is such a thing in life as the valley of the shadow of death. Okay? Now the valley of the shadow of death does not necessarily mean the shadow of your, your, your death. Okay? It can mean the valley of the shadow of the death of your dreams. And everybody goes through that shadow. Now there is that valley where dreams are either concretized or they are lost. And it's a valley of the shadow of death. And actually, so many dreams, so many powerful things, so, so many powerful things start and end in that valley. And they never rise out of there. But those which do come out and they come out stronger and they are concretized. You know, the apostle Peter said that, you know, your faith may be tested by fire, that the preciousness of your faith might be, you know, um, uh, pure like gold. Now, of course, every faith, everything, every ministry, every venture, every business, everything is tested and has to go through the valley of the shadow of death. And it goes through that valley and so many of them don't rise out from there. Now, there is not a single person who starts out to sing, let's say, to be a worshipper and says, I want to be an ordinary worshipper where my songs are only, you understand? Eh? Now, actually, they start with a powerful dream. They imagine their songs being sung all over the world. And that is actually of God. And they have all this belief in their, themselves, in their ability, in all the things they can do. And they are completely convinced that they can do all those things. But now that's before they've started the journey. Now when they start the journey, and then he leads me besides the, you know, the green pastures and the still waters, then you're saying, surely I'm going to be the, a top worshiper in this world. And you can already even see, you know, uh, imagine your music being sung and all that. Then, after you've gone through the still waters, then you go to the valley of the shadow of death. Now, that's where you start doubting everything you ever knew about yourself. But this ministry, is it ever going to be what I, I you know, the things I imagine, will they ever come to pass? That's where all the trials are in there. Everything is in there. And there's a lot of doubt, a lot of self-doubt. Um, uh, a lot of unbelief, a lot of discouragement. There is not a single person who does anything powerful that does not go through the valley of the shadow of death. Okay? And all the negative things when you would encounter them there in the valley of the shadow of death. And most people give up at that stage and say, anyway, I think I was just young. Those people who sing those songs, you know, they are not like me. You understand? And then you actually totally disqualify yourself and you say that was just youthful, you know, excitement. I'm not meant to be all that, actually, and what? And guess what happens after that? You become ordinary. That's the point at which you decide. But anyway, if I can, you know, go to some churches. Now, you know, I remember I used to be in those churches and people come and they come and uh, eh, want to sing a song. You understand? Then he sings, then you fool him. Eh? Then he finishes and goes to another church, another church. He has to s spread his thing between like let's say 10 on Sunday to like 1 to maximize the number of churches so that you can get the uh, maximum number of what? Of money. And now you, what you're looking at is somebody who, st who got stuck in the valley of the shadow of death. Tell, ask him if he thought he was going to end up his music like that. Nobody started like that. No one, not a single person. All of them knew they were going to become renowned. At least national renowned. Maybe world renowned was outside of your scope of imagination, but at least national renown, at least Kampala renown. You understand? Eh? But the next thing you know, you're not even renowned in your home. And you've settled for earning a living. And you know what? So you, so, so you start planning everything according to earning a living. Now they tell you this, you know, Chirimu Sente, what? So you started something powerful which was supposed to change people in your mind, and you are very convinced this is going to be it. I am going to come out of this and this is going to be a very powerful thing. And you can already see people being changed. And your mind is, you know, somewhere in a nice place. And actually, all of that is of God. It is not of yourself. Let me tell you, the dreaming faculty in us is of, is of God. That's why it says without, you know, a, a vision, without dreams, people perish. You understand? Eh? They perish. Okay, in some other translation, it says it, they cast off restraint. But they perish without it because that faculty in us, that thing that says, I am dreaming of being this and becoming this and doing this, as long as it's not a very selfish dream. Of course, if the dream is tied to something material, which is not going to help anybody, then it's actually not of God. Yeah? It's just something, you know, 
But if it is not tied to, because I can say I, I am dreaming of having this and having this mansion and what and what, how is that going to affect people's lives? God's dreams all come from the place of affecting people's lives. So when you're dreaming of becoming that powerful worshiper, you're seeing people worshiping God with your music and somehow getting, you know, into the heavenlies and, you know, things are just happening. People are getting healed and what, and you're actually so convinced about it. And you know that it is going to happen. And then you pass through the green pastures. And God will not take you to the valley of shadow of death until he takes you to the green pastures and the still waters. Because there are so many people who run away. Remember what he said about the children of Israel. He said that um, uh, if I take them very fast to the promised land and they see war, they will run away because they have never seen war. You understand? So he says, let me first give them time. So that they first, you know, first pamper them a bit. So he takes you through green pastures and the still waters. So you, you know, you eat the whatever nice pastures, waters, and what. But then, now for the dream to actually be concretized, it is through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, the interesting thing is everybody who comes out of that valley goes on to become that big, as big as they dreamt they would be. <laughs>